Little Ram. King Dashrath had three queens named Kaushalya, Sumitra, and Keki, but he had no child of his own. To beget a son, King Dashrath performed a yagya. Huge flames came out of the holy fire. Suddenly, Agni Deva, the fire god, appeared out of the fire, holding a golden bowl of kheer in his hand. The fire god said, "O oh king, if your queens eat this kheer, you will definitely give birth to sons." The queens ate the kheer. And in time, the king was blessed with four sons. King Dashrath and his queens were overjoyed. The sons were named Ram, Bharat, Lakshman and Shatrughan. Everybody in the kingdom was pleased to see the charming little Ram. He always kept smiling even when sleeping. Everybody loved him. He was so bubbly that everybody was delighted to see him at play. Now, little Ram learned to roll onto his stomach. Very soon, he learned to creep. Crawl, sit and stand with support. Then he tottered and soon started to walk, run, jump and hop. He learned to talk, sing and dance in a joyful and childish manner. One day, little Ram was playing on the roof of the palace. It was growing dark. As the sun had set, the moon began to rise in the sky. The moon was big, round and shiny. It was a full moon night. There were many stars twinkling in the sky. When Ram saw the moon, he left all his toys and said, I want the moon! Everybody explained to him that the moon was in the sky and very far away. It was not possible to bring the moon down to the earth. But Adamant Ram said, I want the moon. No was an answer he did not like. Who could make him understand? He was a child after all. Ram started weeping, crying and shouting. He said, Do what you can do, but I want the moon. <laughs> he kept on weeping till his face turned red. Everyone tried to make him happy, but in vain. Suddenly, someone brought a golden tray full of water and said, Look, the moon is here in the tray. Indeed, the reflection of the moon fell on the water. Ram was happy and he played with the moon in the tray. Ram was excited. 
As time passed, four of the princes, Ram, Lakshman, Bharat and Shatrughan, were trained in various martial arts along with their studies. The years passed and sage Vishwamitra came to the royal court of King Dashrath. King Dashrath bowed to Vishwamitra. He welcomed the sage and said, Welcome, O great sage. Tell me, what can I do for you? Your wish is my command. Vishwamitra was happy to hear this. He said, You have promised to fulfill my wish, even before hearing it. This gives me great pleasure. I know you will not hesitate to lay down your life to fulfill my wish. King Dashrath looked at Vishwamitra's face. Vishwamitra told him the reason for his visit. We are performing a yagya, but two demons, Marich and Subham, are throwing bones into the holy fire. According to the rules of this yagya, I cannot use my power to destroy them once the yagya has begun. Therefore, I want your son Ram to go with me to destroy them. Remember, you have promised to fulfill my wish. King Dashrath became sad. He was not able to take the decision whether he should send Ram or not. Yet, he had promised to fulfill Vishwamitra's wish. King Dashrath feared for his son's life and his face turned pale. He said to the sage, My son is, is, is very young. Uh, if you don't mind, I am ready to go with you with my huge army. Vishwamitra became angry. He said, O oh, King Dashrath, it is not fit for the Raghukul to make a promise and then not fulfill it. Brahma Rishi Vasisht said to the king, Do not worry, O king. Send Ram and Lakshman together. No harm will come. Yes, no harm will come to them. Vishwamitra has come here only for the well-being of Ram. King Dashrath agreed to send Ram and Lakshman. So they started their journey with Vishwamitra and everybody blessed them. During the journey they were full of energy and courage and sage Vishwamitra constantly guided and encouraged them. He told them the history of the region they passed through. After crossing the rivers Sarayu and Ganga, they reached the Tarika forest. Vishwamitra said, Once upon a time this was a prosperous and well-populated region, but a demoness called Tarika and her son Maricha changed it into a desert region with their dangerous activities. Now nobody dares enter this forest for fear of Tadika. Lakshman wanted to meet Tadika and defeat her in battle. But Ram thought, it is against the Kshatriya Dharam to kill a woman. Vishwamitra realized Ram's dilemma. He said, to protect human beings by slaying the wicked, whether man or woman, is the duty of a Kshatriya. Therefore, do not hesitate to kill this demoness. Hearing this, Ram made himself ready to defeat Tadika. He strung his bow and the twang of the bow frightened the birds and animals in the forest. Tadika became wild with fury on hearing the twang of Ram's bow. She ran in the direction of the sound and saw Ram and Lakshman. She rose in the sky to attack them. She began to attack them with a shower of stones. Vishwamitra said to Ram, The sun is going to set and the demons become stronger at night. Hence, do not delay your stay here. Hearing this, Ram took out another arrow and chanting a mantra, aimed the arrow. 
Radhika fell down with a great scream. And everybody was happy over her death. Vishwamitra was so happy that he embraced Ram. Then they reached Vishwamitra's ashram. The yagya began and Ram and Lakshman waited for the demons to arrive and cause obstacles in the yagya. On the sixth day of the yagya, the demons came there with loud roars. Ha! 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 The demons, Marich and Subahu, came with their army. Ram used a divine weapon on Marich, which wrapped around him and threw him hundreds of miles away. Then Ram used the Agni Sastra and killed Subahu and the demon army. The Yagya was completed and everybody was happy. Along with Ram and Lakshman, Vishwamitra then went to King Janak of Mithila, who had a beautiful young daughter called Sita. She was of marriageable age and King Janak had arranged a swayambar for her. Many years ago, King Janak was presented with Lord Shiva's bow, which was so heavy that nobody could move it. Before the swayambar began, the Diwan or Prime Minister announced Sita will be given in marriage to the man who can lift, bend and string the bow. Many kings and princes tried their luck but all failed. King Janak thought Will my dear Sita never get a worthy husband? At that time, Vishwamitra entered the court along with Ram and Lakshman. King Janak welcomed them. Vishwamitra said, These two young princes are Ram and Lakshman, the sons of King Dashrath of Ayodhya. Vishwamitra told him about the bravery of Ram and Lakshman in destroying the demons. Vishwamitra said to him, Ram and Lakshman have come here to see Lord Shiva's bow. Hearing this, King Janak immediately agreed and said, The princess can certainly see Lord Shiva's bow. I will give my daughter Sita in marriage to the prince who will lift the bow and string it. With the consent of Vishwamitra and King Janak, Ram went near the bow and bowed before it. He lifted it effortlessly and strung it. He drew the string back with such force that the court echoed with the sound. And Lord Shiva's bow was broken. A cheer went up in the court and a shower of flowers fell on the prince. King Janak declared, My daughter Sita will be wedded to Ram. Sita was also happy and the marriage ceremony of Ram and Sita was performed. There was happiness all around, not only on earth but in heaven too. <laughs>